Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna build this groceries app. As you can see here, we have a welcome screen. When you tap get started, it goes to the categories of products and you can scroll. It's a grid-like layout. This design is not mine. I, I have this Figma design here that I downloaded for free from this guy on Figma community. Shout out to Afsa to let us download for free this design. It's a beautiful design. So as you can see here, there's uh, some differences. There's some custom fonts here that I'm not gonna use and I'm gonna use just the standard uh, UI kit fonts and there's also this tab bar that I'm not gonna build today but these two screen there's a lot to cover I think it's enough for this tutorial maybe I can build more stuff in the future about this design but for today I was trying to keep it simple so let's get started project choose app click next we're gonna call it girl series app UI kit as you know I'm building first a UI kit version then the Swift by version choose storyboard we don't need to check any of these boxes click next you can choose any folder you want create and here we have our project first of all we're not gonna use the storyboard so you can delete it just delete move to trash bye bye then there's some setups we need to do to create a project without storyboard so we need to go to info p list application scene manifest scene configuration application session role item zero and then you can see here storyboard name so we can delete this role all right on the project configuration go to build settings click storyboard i mean type storyboard and then we can erase this okay and this is all the setup you need to start configuring our project without storyboards now let's set up some folders to organize our project just click new group let's call it view model So I just create here three folders, model, view, and view model. And inside view, I create the folder controllers. So I'm just gonna move this view controller to the controllers folder, okay? And now I'm gonna drag and drop some helpers that I'm gonna use in this project because I don't believe it's relevant to bore you with things like colors and assets. So I'm just gonna drop here what we need. So let's get to assets i'm gonna drag and drop the images we need here and don't worry i'm gonna share a link with all the assets and helpers that we're gonna use in this project so we have here all we need and i'm gonna also drag and drop two for more folders make sure to check cop items if needed and let me walk you through it what i drag and drop here we have first this class that's called halter that's gonna manage the navigation of the app don't worry you're gonna understand how it works here i made this image struct so we can easily access all the images i just drag and drop and i create two extensions here one from the color so there's all the colors we need the primary color the description and the cards color for the outline and the card itself and two ui view extensions this one is to pin the view to the edges of the parent view and this one is to add multiple views at the same time so that's all the helpers we need and let's start building now let's set up our initial screen let's go to the view controller let's call it welcome view controller this controller needs a router so let's create a router here because it's the one that's going to be responsible to manage the navigation You need to call super here. It's gonna it's probably gonna complain about the required initialization. That's it. Because this is the required init that is used only with storyboard, so we don't need to implement anything here. Alright, so now let's head to the app delegate and scene delegate. The app delegate is responsible for managing the Apple events, the app events like did launch, did the app launch, did the app went to the background. So everything's managed here. And the initial screen 
back in the day was usually set up here on did finish lunch with options. But since iOS 13, Apple created the scene delegate that's responsible to manage the, the multiple scenes, multiple screens. So we're gonna set up our initial screen here. Delete this. We're gonna cast a window scene here as a UI windows, windows scene. The root view controller should be a navigation controller because we're gonna manage multiple controllers here. So let's create a navigation controller. We also need the router to manage these controllers, right? The router needs a navigation, which is the navigation we created, okay? Now let's set up our initial view controller. It's gonna be the root controller, which is our welcome view controller. Our welcome controller needs a router, remember? So we have this router here. Now the navigation controller is empty, so we need to add this root controller to the navigation controller, right? So navigation controller, add child root controller. Okay, so let's create a window now. This UI window with the scene we just casted from the scene, window scene. So the window scene, root controller, root view controller. No, I mean the window. Yeah, the window root view controller. It's gonna be the nav controller. Okay, now we're gonna set this window to this window, which is the app window. Okay, so self dot window equals window okay and last but not least you need to call it make make key invisible it's just saying that this is gonna be the main window showing on top of everything what's complaining here oh this is a weird ui navigation controller all right okay everything is set up let's build and run Okay, it's showing a black screen, which is expected because we didn't do anything on our view controller. So let's just see if everything is okay. Just setting the background color here to, let's say, red. Okay, let's build and run again. I just tap Command R. All right, everything is just setting up properly. Okay, let's finally start building the UI. One thing I like to do is separating the view from the controller so i just i'm gonna create here the view for this for this controller just to keep the responsibilities really separated so let's call it welcome view welcome view we didn't create yet but just a moment so let's create here and then we create a separate file to organize okay i have some shortcuts that helps me speed up the, the coding because you know program at KY kit it's a lot of code so I have this generic view here. I'm gonna explain you what it is. It's just a view, a vanilla UI view that I'm gonna set up all the views that this controller needs to build this welcome view here. All right, so let's call it welcome view. Okay, there is this required need that you know what it is. This intrinsic intrinsic content size. I'm just saying that I'm not, I'm gonna handle all the sizing and resizing with auto layout. So this is no intrinsic metric means with thin height here, okay? All right, now let's connect this welcome view on this controller. So we have here, all right, so we need to add to this controller because we, we created here, but we didn't add to the controller. So let's create a function here. Uh, set up and just add view add sub view which is the welcome view okay now we need to to set up the layout remember that extension that i've put, i've drag and drop here this is an extension to pin the view to the edges so this is auto layout constraints as you can see here we have the top the trailing the bottom and the leading constraint so i'm just attaching to the top trailing bottom and leading of the parent view which is the view controllers view okay so let's just welcome view into edges 
of view. This view is from the view controller, okay? So I just pin the welcome view to the main control, the main view controller's view. Let's set here background color, the background color to blue, just to see if it's a, everything correct. Oh, black screen, what happened? Let's check. Okay, welcome view, welcome view, blue. Oh, we need to call it, right? Let's call here setup and layout. Okay, let's build and run again. Okay, now we have a blue screen. Okay, now let's start setting up our views for this welcome screen. First, we're gonna set up this background image. Okay, guys, since it's a lot of code, I'm just copying and pasting here because I'm sure you don't want me to watch me just writing hundreds of lines of code, right? So I'm just pasting here and we'll walk you through it. So this is a UI I'm, I'm image view. So I create here on this closure, it's a lazy property which means that it's gonna be just call it when it needed and I'm setting here for the image welcome background which is the extension that I created here actually I struck okay I'm setting the content node to aspect fill to fill up all the screen and don't forget to set this translate auto resize mask into constraints to false which for programmatic ui this is set to true by default so we need to set to false i'm just saying that i'm gonna manage this image view with auto layout not with auto resize mask which is the old way of doing this job and then return the image view okay okay we need to add this background image to the view okay just add sub views which is an extension method that I created and add to the view, all right? Now, since I want to be pinned to all the edges, let's use the extension, okay? Just background image, pin to edges of self. Why self? Because the view is a UI view itself, okay? So we need to pin this view to this view, okay? So let's build and run. All right, we have a background image. Okay, let's add the other views we need. As you can see here, we have a logo, a title, a description, and a button. I'm gonna add all the views we need, and then I'm gonna set up the constraints, okay? So here, we have all the views we need. As you can see here, it's a lot of code. So I just, I'm just going to walk you through it, okay? This logo view is very similar to the background image, the setup except for the aspect fit okay here is a label a ui label which is a text on the screen we can you know maybe as a text on swift ui right so here we set up the font the text the text color the alignment this number of lines to zero just means that it's just take how many lines it needs okay doesn't matter to the size of the text is just gonna take as many lines as as it needs. Okay, setting the translate auto size mask and constraints for everyone as always. We also have the description label, which is very similar to the title label. So font, text, text, text color. You see here dot description. This is the extension I added. Okay, align center, same thing. And here's the button. Okay, we create a UI button, background color primary which is from extension X as well. Okay, set title, font, corner radius. Okay, as you can see here, there's a corner radius here. The tint color is the color of the task text inside. And then this is the adding the target. This means that this is the event that is triggered when the user taps this button. Okay, we need to add this add object C font tap start button. Okay, which is this one here. This is our Objective-C uh, notation because this is just uh, a bridge between Swift and Objective-C and for touch up inside, this, which is the type of event, okay? Now, any of this is gonna show up on the screen yet. For the views to show, we need to add to the welcome view. So here I'm adding the sub views. Let's add everything. So logo view, title label, description label, and button. Okay, let's build a run just to see what happens. So as you can see here, we have everything on the screen, but there is no layout. It's just everything on top of each other here on the top. So to fix this, 
we're gonna use auto layout to lay out everything as we here as we have here just a quick introduction for you to understand uh, a little bit about auto layout with auto layout everything should be anchored on the neighbors or in itself let me explain what I mean let's see this button okay with auto layout we have the leading anchor this corner here the left corner is the leading anchor of this button and here on the screen this piece here is the leading anchor of the screen okay so the button has the leading the trailing anchor the bottom anchor and the top anchor and there is also the height anchor which is the this height or the width anchor which is this width here so using auto layout you, sh you should anchor everything either by itself as like for example if you set this button height and width and then the alignment from this bottom here and the x coordinate like center with this center x here okay what do i mean by x on ui kit we have a coordinate system that's from the top left corner here so the top left corner is the zero zero x zero y zero all right so it's from zero to the views width it's the x anchor and from zero and the views height this is the y coordinate okay so when i say center this button on the x anchor i'm centered on the middle of the width of the screen all right you see what i mean when i setting up everything let's start with the button okay let's call the ns layout constraint dot activate constraints this is used to activate several constraints at the same time it's a list of constraints so let's call this dot bottom bottom let's start with the height anchor constraints equal to constant as you can see here the height of this button is 67 okay so let's set to 67 now let's set up the leading the trailing and the bottom constraints leading anchor dot constraints is going to be to equal so in this leading anchor i'm gonna set up the anchor for the bottom with something else with a neighbor so i want this bottom to be anchored to the left of the screen to the left part of the screen to the leading anchor of the screen so i'm gonna say itself right it, which is the view leading anchor okay this is I'm pinning the leading anchor of the start button to the leading anchor of itself. Since Swift 4, I think I, we don't need this self anymore. So we just call it lead, leading anchor. And then for by how much? Okay. So as you can see here, oh, we have 30. So by 30, this leading anchor and this leading anchor. So the constant would be 30. The trailing anchor is a little bit trickier to understand if the first time you've seen this trailing anchor constraint equal to constant trailing anchor which is the trailing anchor of the view right this is the same as self dot trailing anchor okay so here we also need 30 but i can't say here 30 okay i'm just gonna let 30 so you can see what happens and let's see set the bottom bottom anchor the bottom anchor has the same problem as the trailing anchor i'm gonna explain what problem it is so we have to anchor to the bottom anchor of the view itself and then by 90 okay have here 90 90 okay let's build and run for you see to see what happens so the button is not showing you know why because as I explained to you, the coordinate system. The anchor here, the trailing anchor, when I put 30, I'm taking the trailing anchor of the view and add 30. So I'm just, I'm doing this. I'm taking the button and adding 30. So it's doing this. The same with the bottom anchor. I'm adding 90 to the bottom anchor. So we have the bottom anchor here. And I'm adding 90, so I'm putting the button here. So that's why he's probably like here, which is x30 after the trailing anchor and 90 after the bottom anchor. So the button is right here. That's why it's not showing on the screen. 
okay so how to fix it here we need to pass a negative number okay why because we have the trailing anchor and we need to subtract 30 we have here the bottom anchor and we have to subtract 90 all right so let's set here minus 30 and minus 90 let's see what happened build around so now the button is showing because it's minus, minus 30 here minus 90 here plus 30 here because it's leading anchor plus 30 okay and the height of the bottom is 67 okay let's see if you don't set the height what happened command r to build see there's no height anymore now the height is constrained is constrained to the heights of the label okay so this height of the bottom is the same as the height of the label it cannot squeeze this this label so it gets its height so that's why we need to set here see okay let's move on to the other components before setting up the constraints for the other components let me explain you why this is important what's the point of auto layout so as you so here I set up all the anchors so this anchor this trailing anchor is tied to this trailing anchor and the same as the leading anchor so what happens when we have a iPhone 14 Pro Max with a, a larger screen so this bottom is gonna expand the width to keep the anchor at 30 all right so it doesn't matter the size of the screen he will keep all the anchors layout we keep all the anchors here so even with a smaller screen if the width is smaller the bottom will squeeze a little the width here but the 90 on the bottom and the 30 on the trailing in the 30 on the leading and the height at 67 everything will keep the same so the the width of the bottom the bottom will expand according to the width of the screen so that's why auto layout is important so you your UI is gonna adapt to any screen okay now let's set up the description label the description label here is 40 okay and I'm gonna take a different approach here since, since it's, it's a small text I don't think I need to set the leading and trailing constraints here because the width of the text will not change even on smaller screens so what I'm gonna do is setting the bottom first description label bottom anchor constraint equal to constant the bottom anchor of the screen of the view here is 40 so it's minus 40 as you know and now I'm gonna align the center X of the label with the center X of the view at the center X anchor so the center of the label is gonna be the same of the center of, of the view as you can see here is on the center right so let's see what happens oh why is showing on the bottom let's see what we did wrong oh the bottom anchor of the label should be aligned with the top anchor of the bottom see details all right so is the start button top anchor because this, this anchor is, is on top of this bottom right let's see now build and run okay now we got it right okay so is it the center of the view is the it and the bottom anchor is anchored to the top anchor of the bottom by 40 right okay let's set up now the title title label okay the bottom anchor of the title label should be anchor to the top anchor of, of the description right so description label top anchor so the description label top anchor by 19 let's make let's make it 18 okay 
so what solution we can apply here I think here we need to setting up the trailing and the leading constraints you know why because otherwise the line wouldn't break would, would be like just the the, the 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 label would show in one line because there's no constraints on the trailing and the leading okay just to see what happened let's put the title label center x center x anchor the same as the center anchor of the view exactly as we did with the description label let's see what happens okay that's more this is bottom anchor right it should be minus okay oops okay see what 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 i say this is just one line so to break the line of the title we need to set up the leading and the trailing anchor let's do that now so since we have here let's just copy and paste it's easier let's change it to title label and title label and then should be the leading anchor and trailing anchor by let's see 80 okay 80 minus 80 for the trailing the bottom 18 okay let's see okay now we set up our title properly exactly as we have here and now we have just the logo let's set up the logo i think the logo i can do the same thing as i did in the description just put the bottom anchor to the title and the center x of the view right let's set up here logo view bottom anchor constraint equal to constant would be the title top anchor right by by 40 so it's minus 40 because it's a bottom anchor and last one we're gonna be center x anchor constraints equal to constant center x anchor actually we don't have we don't need constant just equal to the center just for you to know if you add a constant here let's say 20 it's gonna be aligned by the center of the view plus 20 so it's just like if you put center plus 20 it's gonna be like here okay so let's see i put 20 here okay see it's the center plus a little bit so let's put here with no constant to be exactly at the center okay i think that's it right here we have our welcome screen so we covered a lot so i think it's better to break this tutorial on four parts two parts for ui kit and two parts for swift ui so in, on the next video we're gonna make we're gonna set up the event for the bottom right what happens when it clicks the bottom and we're gonna create the other screen which is the more complicated one so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoy and i see you on the next one